let's start with kind of overall. Obviously, you know, we got Ravens Chiefs tomorrow night, which is so exciting. Um, what your models, what your data tells you, maybe some surprises this season. Um, for me, look, I, honestly, I, I look at the Washington Commanders, and, and I know I might be higher on them than some others, but it was my favorite draft class in the league. I think Dan Quinn was a really good hire, and and, and I just I just think I, I love Jaden Daniels, honestly. I really do. I think he was the right pick at number two overall. The fit in Cliff Kingsbury's offense, I, I don't know that they – I don't know that they necessarily make the playoffs this year. We have to see how much their defense improves. But I, I'm a big, big believer in what they have on offense. As long as their offensive line holds up enough, and even if it's just decent instead of great, Daniels' feet are special. They're absolutely special. I, I think he's got Lamar Jackson type of feet. And this first game against Tampa is really interesting. I think you have them. And then, look, I know it's a big story, and it's going to continue to be a big story. It's Man, the New York Jets have so much talent. They have so much talent. It's like, can they just stay healthy? and put it together. It's, they have the, the players are all there to be one of the best teams in football. They just need to coach it right, and they just need to stay healthy enough. And is it just health? Because, listen, uh, leadership on a football team can make a world of difference. Aaron Rodgers is unbelievable as a player, but he's a little aloof when it comes to being a person. And I think a lot of the players see what he does, and they want to do it, and they don't get the same, uh, uh, I guess, freedom that he does, which can screw a team up. It can, and, and it's really incumbent on Robert Sala to keep that chemistry together. But I, I got—I know Aaron Rodgers has all of the other stuff, but I think we have to remember, especially mentally, how good of a quarterback this guy is, and, and he yes. can change plays to any look he wants, run or pass. And and, and, I, and I think people forget with all of the other stuff that surrounds him, the guy's <laughs> like a football savant. I mean, he can just see things before they even happen, right? And the Jets—I got to be honest—they've never had a quarterback like that, right? They—they they just don't. They, you know, when you're talking about young kids like Sam Darnold and Zach Wilson and everything else that they've gone through in the last decade plus or really forever, they've never had a guy who can just go to the line, look at a whole defense and know exactly how to change the play, where to go with the football, uh, the, the immense difference, the on-field leadership just between the lines. I don't question it with Aaron Rodgers one bit off the field and the personality, whatever, whatever people want to get into with those arguments. I, I, I stay out of those. I try to just go with what's on the tape and what's always on the tape with Aaron Rodgers as a guy with a super high football IQ. That's going to help them a lot. Can you, all right. I agree with you with Rodgers. I think the jets are loaded. I think health's the question up there and the jets just always kind of don't, it never seems to work for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Specifically with Jaden, you're, you're high on him. You watch all the LSU tape. Like we've all been, we're all, I think everybody's high on him. Could you give me what you think a ceiling and a floor looks like for Jaden Daniels this season? For this season, I, I think a floor looks like a guy who, if the offensive line struggles and they don't find another big time weapon outside of Terry McLaurin, I think the floor is a guy who's really kind of fighting back there in the pocket and running more than he should. And, and cause you hope he's a rhythm passer and he can, he's really accurate. You hope that he can, you hope that he can just, you know, he doesn't have to manage a bad situation around him, which we don't know if it's a good or bad situation yet. There's just a lot of young players. For me, the ceiling is offensive rookie of the year. Absolutely. I, I just mm. think if, if you look at Jaden Daniels and what he became in his two years at LSU, super accurate, quick decision maker, doesn't put the ball in danger. He had the best turnover worthy play rate for us in the history of the power five. We've been, we have, we have college data tracking back to 2014 and nobody in the power five puts the ball in danger less than Jaden Daniels and just incredible feet. I mean, he's not just a good runner. He's a special runner. So you combine what he can do as a dual threat with his ability to make quick decisions outside in Cliff Kingsbury's offense. I, I really like his fit in the offense too. I, I, I know Kingsbury's gotten some criticism before in Arizona, but Look, Kyler Murray darn near won an MVP in Arizona under Cl Cliff Kingsbury, too, and, and has a very similar skill set. Jaden Sealing, you very well could see him win offensive rookie of the year. Does Jaden's quickness and decision-making help, uh, help the offensive line out a little early? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you've seen it before with guys like Tom Brady, guys like Joe Burrow, even Aaron Rodgers, where if they maybe they don't have the best offensive line in the league, but their ability to read defenses and get the ball where it needs to go quickly. And to be honest, you, you also have his mobility, which is a big asset. Yeah. I think it's a big asset in the running game, too. But yeah, that ability to make to make quick decisions. Right. And, and people think, oh, he's he's an athlete. He runs around back there and he really doesn't. He, when he 
decides he's a to pocket throw the passer. Yeah, he is. He's a pocket passer first. And even when he decides to run, he doesn't scramble around sideline to sideline. He gets north and south and he stresses out a defense immediately when he makes the decision. I like when he makes a decision to run. Everyone talks about the decisions to pass and where to make the reach. But when he makes a decision to take off and run, it's immediately north and yeah. south. And, and that puts a lot of stress on a defense, especially, look, we've seen him. He had 80-yard run against Florida, long touchdown. I'm talking 50, 60, 70-yard touchdown runs. The way he gets north and south with his speed is a massive stressor. on. Uh, it's going to be a massive stressor on every defensive coordinator that he plays against. Well, and I think it'd be crazy. Like I don't know, I don't know where you live, but – in D.C., after the second preseason game, when they played the Dolphins, Daniels got tackled. And a <laughs> lot of people are screaming that he did, that he has to slide. And Dan Quinn kind of yelled at him, too. He can't slide on that play. I think it he could have gotten out of bounds. But, like, regardless, it launched this long conversation about Daniels' inability to slide. Is he going to get hurt? And, and I just very much believe you cannot take his running ability from him because it's a huge – like asset. Look, we could criticize a lot of quarterbacks for not sliding sometimes. So, I, I, you know, and, and I think just because maybe it's the way he's built because he's a thinner guy, he's 6'3 and 210, 215. No, it's part of his game, right? And look, yeah. are there times where there are avoidable hits? I think there's other quarterbacks who don't take all the big hits when you think about Mahomes or Russell Wilson back in the day when he was more mobile, was really, really good at avoiding hits. But look, you have to let him run. He's one of the most dynamic athletes in the NFL walking in right now. You, yeah. you can't, I understand there's going to be times. Yeah, dude, slide. I, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. There was times at LSU, you, you put on the tape and you go, boy, I wish he would have slid right there, <laughs> honestly, but you can't, you can't take it away and tell him not to run. Right. You just tell, look, get out of bounds or look, if you think you can shake somebody cool, but I don't hear anybody say this about Lamar Jackson. I don't Nobody, nobody. And, and Lamar and honestly, came in less than him. Yeah, and he came in less than him, and, and he and he gets physical in the run game, and he takes some hits, and you know, and he's gotten better at not taking hits also. But look, it, it's it's a teachable skill. I, I think to think it's some giant flaw in Daniel's game. And look, injuries are going to happen on a football field. True, guys get hurt. If he gets hurt, it's probably not going to be because oh, he's got this god awful habit of not sliding. Just let him play football. It, it, it's fine, and he's it's, it's something to work on, sure. But it's not like something that 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 is a flaw in his, his in his level of talent. You just have Hell to no. let him play football. Yes. You know, as I look let at the it, I play think football. people playing football in the NFL is hard enough. You don't want a guy running around talking about, should I slide here or not slide here? You know, just let him play. Think about the things he needs to take care of. He'll figure that other stuff out. And absolutely. And the hardest thing for a football player to do on the field is think. You, you don't want guys who are thinking and hesitating. <laughs> thinking and hesitating or, or, or what have you, because those, those guys that hesitate, especially at that speed, that's, that's when it goes wrong. And Jaden has a, he's got a higher football IQ than people give him credit for. And he's got just amazing instincts, like certain guys that just, you know, Caleb Williams has it too, where you just go, these guys just have instincts that you can't teach. And that's part of his instinct is wanting to make plays and be super highly competitive and make plays in the run game. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is take that away. I, I think, for a long time, the best quarterbacks in the NFL were like traditional pocket passers, right? And that's what you watch. But that has shifted so much. It shifted because the defense got faster. Yeah. So you don't need a guy standing up there like a statue. Right. And I just think Jaden grows up watching Mahomes or or like – He watched McNabb. That's why he wears five. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he didn't that's, stand still. Right. Um, it just things evolve, and I think folks have to be cool with that. Um. What you have a lean for uh, week one in Tampa between Ooh, the commanders? It's a, it's a close call. I, oh man, I think I think it's closer to a coin flip game than people think. I think I would probably just barely lean Tampa home field advantage, and, and I think the matchup in this game I'm looking for. I think Washington can absolutely go down there and win. The matchup I'm looking at is actually Jaden Daniels versus Todd Bowles, and and, and Todd Bowles obviously is famous for. So many of just the, the exotic blitz looks and mixing coverages and, and showing you one side and giving you the other and dropping off. And, and, and Antoine Winfield Jr., especially at safety, what, one of the best players in football. I, I think there's going to be a chess match between what Jaden Daniels can see and what he can handle as far as blitz looks and different things that he may not necessarily have seen in college because in college – 
he walked onto every field and he was the best athlete and it didn't matter what you scheme up mm-hmm. he was going to be he was going to be better than you right yeah this game in tampa is really interesting if daniels either if he breaks the blitz with his speed or he beats it over the top with his arm that's what it comes down to to me i think daniels versus todd bowles was quietly one of the best matchups in in any game this week i i'm with you wow. man um and- in the first game, it's the quarterback against the D coordinator. The head coach in this case, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are t- talking with Dalton Wasserman, PFF data analyst, uh, does a ton of college football stuff as well. Also, listen, I had my last draft last night. It is fantasy time right now. And what's cool is you can sync your league up to pro football focus and they'll do it all season with position rankings, um, all the analysis. It, it, it's pretty cool. And check out pff.com and pff plus. Um, elsewhere in the league, what, what are you really looking forward to kind of seeing something that you expect to change? Um, what's going to surprise folks? Uh, what's going to surprise folks, man. I I think I'll tell you what, what a primetime slate that we have, right. To start out. I I I think, I think you're, I think the primetime slate, all four games that are primetime Thursday with Ravens chiefs, Friday, Packers, Eagles. Sunday with Stafford and the Rams playing the Lions again, and Monday with Jets Niners. I don't think there's a better primetime slate than that. But I'll, I'll tell you, another game I think everybody's going to be watching, I'll stay on the rookie quarterback thing. I, I think, you know, everyone, I'll tell you right now, everyone this weekend is going to pick the Bears to beat Tennessee. I know they're at home. It's Caleb Williams' first game. It's going to be electric. And, and Tennessee, while they might not be world beaters, they, they have more talent there than people think. I, I think that's going to be a really tight competitive game. If the Bears – if the Bears mess around and, and either, you know, you don't want Williams to go and have some turnovers like he did last year at USC, and the, we mm-hmm. got to see the Bears be better in the trenches. I think that Bears-Titans game, I, I, I know, I can tell you on Wednesday right now, everybody, everybody you see on TV, anywhere, they're all going to pick the Bears to win. And I'll tell you right now, it's still not, just because it's the Titans, it's not going to be an easy task. The Titans have some good football players. You've got a dynamic receiver duo in DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley. And, and, you know, and they're going to be charged up in their first game under Brian Callahan. I I think that's a very interesting game to watch. Caleb Williams, obviously Caleb Williams is the headliner, but there is that's that's a dangerous game for them. I I really think so. I don't think it's going to be the cakewalk that people think. Do you trust Levis, though? Will Levis? I mean, (laughs) it's interesting. It's it's an element with Levis where I'm curious to see his chemistry with Brian Callahan, because one thing with Levis he throws the ball downfield more often than anybody in the league. And the Bears, I will tell you, the Bears' secondary is the strength of their defense. It's a really fun matchup. Can Will Levis take what the defense gives him as opposed to just trying to take big shots downfield? Because this Bears' secondary, and they added Kevin Byard to it, it's a legitimate unit with Jalen Johnson, with Kevin Byard, with Jaquan Brisker. They've got a lot of really good players in their back seven I think the Titans' ability to run the ball and draw people up and then have Levis take shots over the top is big, but he has to not force the ball downfield in this game. I mean, uh, uh, when you look at Caleb Williams, okay, he does a lot of off-schedule plays. He, he holds onto the ball longer, which means he takes more contact. Why is there no one worried about him getting hurt? Um, I, I'm not sure, honestly. I, I, I'm not sure because he, he holds the ball more often, more yes. often and longer than, than, like than a guy crazy. like Daniels does. Yeah, 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 and look, and the off-schedule stuff and what he can do athletically, he's amazing. I, I, I'll tell you what, Caleb Williams rolling to his right, much in the same sense as it used to be with Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen. Now, Caleb Williams rolling to his right is going to be an absolute weapon. I, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, and I like that they've gotten some design rollouts in there for him too, but, but you're right. I mean, there are times, and there were times last year at USC where it's that hero complex. He's trying to put the team on his back. He's trying to make all the plays himself, and – and the more he actually stays away from that, I think the better he's going to be. Look, again, you have to let him play football and use his instincts, but, yeah. but I, I don't think it's you – know, you just can't walk into a game thinking about who's going to get injured today. You, you can't have it. Right. It's contingency. Yeah. Yeah, it's I all agree. Stuff. You, you know, but, but I think with Caleb, there is an element where it's like, okay, we need you to sometimes – make plays in structure right and when he gets in trouble is when he when he goes to his talent and his athletic ability too much if he plays within the structure that's actually when he was better at usc last year it was from a clean pocket and in lincoln riley's system so i'm curious to see how much they can keep him within structure and still succeed the plays look there's going to be eight to ten plays a game where we go wow okay look at Caleb williams my god but he's got to <laughs> play within this he's got to play within the system sometimes as well yeah. for sure um dalton last one dude uh, Super Bowl pick. Who's winning? Who are they beating? 
I have the Detroit Lions beating the Kansas City Chiefs for their first wow. Lombardi to get, bring their first Lombardi wow. trophy back to Detroit. Best offensive line in football went out and, and fixed the secondary, hopefully in the off season, which was their biggest weakness, drafted a couple of really good young kids and Terry on Arnold and Ennis Rakestraw. I like what, if they had a good secondary last year, they may have won the whole thing. Um, they, if they're so consistent on offense, Ben Johnson stayed, all the characters are coming back. St. Brown, um, Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs, all those guys. If J- Jamison Williams might be a big X factor there. They need, I think one more outside weapon. And if he ever becomes what he was supposed to be as a first round pick. I think the lions then have the best offense in football. And I think they could ride that all the way. I have Jameson Williams in two fantasy leagues. Do you think he can hit? I think he can. He's got the talent. Look, and I think you've got years that were both disrupted by things, you know, first he, he tore his ACL in the national championship game at Alabama and then missed most of his first year. Then he got suspended last year for six games. He's just, this is hope, what you're hoping for is this is just the first season in a while that he's just in a rhythm and he's just playing football and there's nothing else going on. And, and what he adds to this offense, look, St. Brown is great underneath. Laporta's great underneath. Jameer Gibbs in the run game is awesome. They need somebody who can get over the top and at least threaten safeties over the top. And Williams was that guy at Alabama for Bryce Young. And for if, sure. he, if he's that guy for the Lions, that's the one thing they're missing. They can be as methodical as any team in the league. They can pick up six to eight yards on any play they want. But can they take home run swings? And he has to be that home run hitter. Hey, Dalton, thanks a lot for the time, appreciate bro. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys big time.